Hi everyone, this is Ryan with KeyframeGeek.com here to show you a quick tip for today on how to take something you've edited in Final Cut and take it over to Compressor to export in a number of different ways. Uh, you can go to DVD, you can go to H.264 for the web, you can go to whatever you like really. So quickly we'll get started and here we go. Uh, let's say you have your sequence here. Um, let's say I've done some editing. Let's pretend like I've done some. And uh, let's see, let's go change your sequence name to whatever you want to call it. Here I've been doing some tests with my HMC 150 camera, and uh, that's what I'll name this one. So we'll just name this Test 1. And now we're ready to export. So the big thing to remember is that Final Cut is very dependent on what, what window you're active in. So uh, for example, if I click here, I have now made this window active, the timeline, and you can tell because it's highlighted here with a lighter gray than, say, this one up here is. So um, if I wanted to export this timeline, I could just click into it to make sure it's uh, active, and then go to File, Export, sorry, Send to Compressor. Uh, alternatively, if I had multiple sequences here, um, let's just say I had all these that I wanted to to send to Compressor. I could highlight them here in the browser. You can do this with a single one if you want. And right click here on the icon and go to Send to Compressor. For now, I'll just do the one here in the timeline. Notice that I made it active again. File, Send to Compressor. That's going to load up Compressor. Compressor is a utility uh, used to submit batches to a hidden program called QMaster that is actually doing the work under the hood. So to get started, um, what we'll do is we'll highlight this, uh, this what we call as a source, and it is basically a representation here of the sequence, named after the sequence here, that I sent to Compressor. If you sent multiple sequences, you'll have a, a whole slew of these, depending on how many you sent over. So specifically here, what we'll do is we will click here to highlight, and you'll see that it's not highlighted. Now it is. Uh, this source button here. Now if we go to the target menu, choose new target with setting, this is where the fun comes in. Um, if, if you want, you can take it to a DVD. Uh, let's say if I wanted to take this one to a DVD, it's under 90 minutes, so I would choose this one here. You might be tempted to twirl this down and choose one of the two down here. But the way DVD Studio Pro works, if you're planning on exporting out to a DVD there, is simply you export a video and an audio uh, of the sequence that you're creating. And, and the nice thing about Final Cut and actually Compressor here is that it lets you do this in one step. Instead of adding them individually, you can just click on the folder here, twirl down or not, just if you're clicking on the folder name and you choose Add, you will now see that we have what are to called two targets, one here for the audio, one here for the video. Um, we can make sure they're both selected. And what you see here across the screen is your source, your first target here of audio, your second target here of video. You're basically reading what kind of target it is here. And you're also looking at the where it's, where it's going to land, basically, where you're wanting to export this to. Now, right now it says source, and sometimes Final Cut can be a little finicky about where source is, especially if you're sending from a sequence, because you're not actually opening a file. You're not trying to compress a file that is already compressed or is already compiled, so to speak, uh, like, a, like a .mov. In our case, we're trying to export a sequence that is, uh, that is really only data pointing at the media. So we'll get into that later. So anyway, where you want to send this is a particular file. And, and according to my file structure, which is what I'll be uh, explaining all throughout all these videos, is, uh, is, is in a particular place. So let's go to the target menu, choose destination. And in our case, we're going to choose other. As you can see, there's a few other choices here. Um, I put everything in the same project folder as uh, the project is in, so I'm going to choose other, and I'm going to choose here, I'm going to go to the drive, it's under HMC tests, and uh, let's go ahead and make a new folder, and I like to put an underscore in front that makes sure it stays up at the top of the list, 
and this one will be called finals. Um, okay. All right, so we've made the finals folder, and in my case, I'm, I'm a big fan of versioning things, so uh, especially things that I might submit to a client or finals of anything, really. So I'm going to make a new folder and call this V01 DVD. And here we go. We're basically getting we're basically getting this one ready to go to DVD. You can use a lot of these steps, and I'll show you a few in a second, to take the same sequence that we sent to Compressor and make something else out of it, like a web-ready version. So in this case, this is the DVD, and I'm going to hit Open. Now, what we have here is a source that I've highlighted here and two targets. We've prepared the DVD version. Now what we would like to do is create a new target with a setting for the web. And in this case, uh, a very simple one that you might want to use for, uh, say, something like uh, Vimeo or YouTube could be, um, particularly Vimeo, I think YouTube is a little more picky about what they want, um, so uh, which would be under, let's do the whole thing here, it's under Apple, Formats, QuickTime, and go all the way down to QuickTime H264. Now when you add this, you're going to see another target's been added and it's automatically highlighted. Before we forget, let's go ahead and make this go where we want it to. So we'll go to Target. Since it's highlighted, we can choose this and choose Other. Again, we'll put it where we're heading. And in this case, it's a web ready, so I'll do VO1 Web. All right, and now let's open that. You can see that now we're going into the DVD ones, are going to the DVD folder, and the web ones going to the web folder. Woohoo! So now that we have these three ready, what we can do is we can make uh, modifications to how this one is interpre uh, interpreted um, and how it's exported. So if we double click on it, uh, we will get its uh, inspector here. <clears throat> and obviously, we'll need to make some changes on this. And one thing we could do is change the size. Now I'll get into these more in depth in a future tutorial. But the ones you want to make sure you notice uh, the ones you want to make sure that you are looking for are under geometry. Uh, I guess it relates to the geometry of the video. Right now it's at 100% of source, which means that in this case it was 1920 by 1080 square pixel, yada, yada, yada. Your case will be whatever your source was. Since this is going to the web, 1080 is a little much for the web, so why don't we take it down to 1280 by 720. <clears throat> it's a good little happy medium for a lot of web stuff that I've published. So now we've made this change, but if you want to make this change again on another video, we should probably save this set of options here under Save As. And let's call this one, let's just say Web 1280 by 720. And it's a good idea to label them as such. That, that way you know what they are. Let's go ahead and save it. And next time we need it, we can call that up directly. So now we're basically ready. We need to tell Compressor to go ahead and let's submit this batch and let uh, the hidden program called QMaster uh, kind of do its thing. So what we're going to do now is hit Submit button down here in the bottom right. And it's going to ask us what we want to call this batch. And for our case, I've never actually saved a batch for any particular reason. I'm sure there's a lot of great reasons, but I've never had to. So I am just going to say submit. <clears throat> now you'll see down in the history that Untitled is running. We can twirl this down and see a little more about what is actually running and what's happening. In this case, it looks like if we expand this out here, you'll see that the audio has already processed. The video is processing and the H.264 is processing as well. So if we go to Finder and we look in our finals, under DVD, you'll see that we have the AC3 and the M2V file ready. We also have a web folder here with this one ready as well. Uh, I can tell here that it's completed and all of these look good. So in our next video, I'm going to show you how to take the DVD ready versions and actually make a disc in DVD Studio Pro. I hope you'll join us. Please leave uh, any comments. I look forward to hearing what you think about these videos uh, down below each video. And uh, would look forward to hearing what you would like me to cover next time. As always, uh, loving to geek out, so let's geek out together. 
Again, this is Ryan with keyframegeek.com. Have a good time.